So by the early part of the 20th century, particle physics seemed to be very nice and simple. Although we might have a load of different elements, we could explain that all ele elements are actually made out of protons, neutrons and electrons. Sorted. But then uh, they found that other things couldn't be explained. Sometimes they found that there are little particles that were a bit like electrons, but they tended to have maybe uh, the opposite charge. So rather than being a negative, they were positive. They also found that they couldn't explain uh, some things like uh, radiation, perhaps with beta radiation, by just looking at um, you know, the electrons which are emitted from the nucleus. You know, how could that be? How is it that this beta radiation, these electrons, can be emitted from inside the nucleus of an atom? And what, what they then found was a few new particles. Now, as they found more particles, what they realised was that the proton and the neutron aren't fundamental particles. What that means is that a proton is actually made out of smaller things. And these smaller things are called quarks. Now, a proton is made out of three quarks. And what we have are up quarks and down quarks. So that's my proton. And a neutron is also made out of up and down quarks. But this time, there's two down quarks and an up quark. So this is actually, um, you know, a bit more detail. And actually, they found that you could effectively split down protons and neutrons. And what they found was that we had two types of quark. We had an up quark and we had a down quark. So we had up quarks, down quarks, and we had our electrons. And again, this, uh, you know, tended to make sense. But what they then found was that we had things which were like electrons, but they were heavier. Now, this thing here is called a muon. And, you know, we do get muons. These come as uh, cosmic rays, and we often have a massive shower of mu muons kind of hitting their surface. And uh, as long as, as well as these electrons, we've had other things which were a bit like electrons, but they had no charge. And because they had no charge, they were called uh, neutrinos. You know, neutron being neutral, and effectively they're very small, so that's called a neutrino. So what I have here then, this little grey thing here, is my electron neutrino. So we have an electron neutrino, the electron, a muon. Well, if we have a, an electron neutrino, does that mean we also have a muon neutrino? Well, it does, yeah. And what they found is as they discovered more and more particles, we had uh, some particles which um, they called charm and some particles which had a very strange property, which we call strange quarks. And as they looked more and more, what they found, they found some more quarks, okay? And here we have uh, a quark at the top, uh, which I'm going to call the top quark, and there's one just underneath it, which I'm going to call the bottom. And, you know, these have other kind of properties. And, you know, what we have now is we have kind of... Um, you know, basically like a generation of, of matter here, another generation here, and that means there's also another particle which is like an electron. Now this one here is called a tau particle. Now a tau particle has a, is a negative particle, but this has a mass equivalent to like, you know, the mass of a gold nucleus. So it's by basically an incredibly, incredibly heavy electron. And that means not only do we have electron and muon neutrinos, we also have tau neutrinos. So what we have here are quarks at the top, and we also have a classification of particles that we call leptons. And what we find is that there's basically what we call three generations of matter. We've got the first generation, uh, second generation, and third generation. Why is that? Uh, I don't know, and I don't think anybody knows at the moment. There must be a reason for this. But what we also have on this model here is we have things that can carry the charge. Now, first of all, uh, this thing here is called the photon. And this is what you're very uh, used to in terms of thinking about light. But a photon is what carries the electromagnetic force. Now, there's also a particle that carries the strong force, and that's called a gluon, because it effectively it kind of glues uh, the protons to the other protons inside the nucleus. But what we've now seen is that if inside uh, a proton or a neutron we have maybe uh, quarks inside, well, actually, these quarks also have a charge. And in order to keep a positive quark near to another positive quark, there must be a force inside. Now, this force is only very, very short range. And this is what we call the weak force. And again, the weak force is carried by a couple of bosons. Uh, and what we have here, then, are the W and the Z. And this kind of seemed to make sense. What we have is basically a, a standard model of physics. But there's something missing. There's no reason, or we couldn't find a reason, why some things had mass. And that's where this thing here came along. This boson here is a boson that allows things to have mass, and this is what we call the Higgs. And you might have heard a lot of uh, information in the press about the Higgs boson and the search for it recently at CERN. And really, these things here 
are what we call bosons. And it's this thing here, which is called the standard model of physics, okay? Now, it's not just that we have protons, neutrons, and electrons. What we find is that pretty much everything that we can see in the universe is made out of up quarks, down quarks, and electrons. You know, that makes up all the atoms, that makes up all of you. But these things here, they can exist, even if it's only for a short amount of time, they might come to being and then disappear back into energy. But this is a really, really fascinating part of physics. But this isn't the whole model. Not only do we have up quarks and down quarks, in addition to all of this matter here, we also have stuff called antimatter. Now, antimatter is, I'm just going to put them upside down, is a bit like normal matter, but it has an opposite charge and many other properties are reversed. So though we might have an up quark, we also have what we call an anti-up. And if we have a down quark, we have an anti-down. If we have an electron, we also have something that we call an anti-electron. In this case, uh, it might be called a positron, so a positive electron. So what we find is that in addition to this, we have a mirror image of antimatter and the sort of antimatter equivalents. And basically, you know, um, they do exist. Uh, and this is how we have things like PET scanners, so positron emission tomography, because these particles, these antimatter things do exist. Now, again, if we classify things, we can classify things in two ways. First of all, the things at the bottom in grey here are what we call leptons. OK, and just like in biology, we classify things as like birds and fish and so on. We can classify particles in different, way, different ways. Now, at the top, using these six particles here, what we then do is we make up things called hadrons. Now, there are basically two sorts of hadrons. Some hadrons are made out of three quarks. So, for example, if you have a neutron, it's made out of three quarks. And this is what we call a baryon. So a baryon is made out of three quarks, but we can also have things made out of two quarks. And in this case, you might have um, a quark and an anti-quark. And basically, if you combine a quark and an anti-quark together, what we get then is something called a meson. And this meson is made out of two quarks, one which is a normal quark and another anti-quark. So basically, what you can think about leptons, we can think about hadrons, and hadrons, there's two sorts, there's baryons and there's mesons. Does that make sense? Hopefully some of it does, but I guess this is probably going to give you many, many more questions. And this is a really, really fascinating in physics. At the moment, you know, people don't know all the answers. Why do we have three generations of matter? I don't know. How come electrons can turn into muons and so on? Okay, it does get complicated, but you know, this is a really, really fascinating area.